Hello, boys and girls, my name is Hotus T and welcome back to another day in Minecraft. We are here back in our world where last time we have built some redstone decoders and encoders. And today we want to tackle another project related to that. So, incidentally, um, we have here at our cobblestone farm, we have a decoder that can deal with two signals. And that's good because we want to send cobblestone either over to our storage system to, uh, to fill up uh, at the cobblestone storage or towards our smelter uh, because we might need stone smelted there. Right, so that should be easy. We get two signals out and we then have to send the shulker boxes one way or another. And I think we will have, um, for each destination, we will have a dedicated water stream, but we will have uh, basically one uh, dropper that uh, provides or pulls out the, uh, the chest. So we will have to have some way to decide into which water stream the uh, shulker box will go and we can deciding based on the signal. Over here for the bone meal we have a similar situation. Uh, we have multiple farms that require bone meal but we only get one signal or always the same signal uh, just requesting bone meal. We don't know where the request came from. And incidentally, I did not really uh, plan this out that way, but the way we will deal with that is from each form, we will have a dedicated redstone line. We will have a dedicated line providing the shulker box. Uh, that then means we also have to decide where the shulker box in which water stream it will go. And this time we have to basically decide that based on the input line of the redstone signal, while there we can base it on the decoded output. So I think uh, let's hop over quickly into the redstone test world to figure out how we can do that um, in a meaningful way. I think we are on a winning design here. We have water stream going out from here and then basically here at this point splitting in two direction. And in this setup, the items would probably go straight ahead. But we have pistons below that can block either of those passes. Uh, so if we press this button, this one will be uh, uh, blocked and we will end up with the item here. Now, if we do this on this side, we end up with the item there. And after we have this bensed the item, we have a bit of delay going on here. And then we power the top to piston to uh, move any block that was moved up down again. And here we don't even need to care uh, which block we moved up. We just make sure we move everything down again. And this is good enough for our cobblestone uh, farm because there either we have to send it this way or that way. 
However, for the bone meal, we need more than two inputs. So basically that means we probably will have this module next to, to here, maybe with a bit of space. But that also means uh, we most likely have to uh, not only move one block up, but more than one. So let's see how we can achieve that. And now also this problem seems to be resolved. Um, well, this setup is a bit cramped. As you can see, we have the waterline output here and basically redstone line at the same height. So that will not work. So we will end up with putting that all uh, down below the water lines. But that's just an implementation detail. And I have now here two outputs uh, color coded, the lime one triggered by this line and the yellow one by this line. And we have then on here the input signal. And this is nice because it basically separates the way uh, where we get the uh, input uh, where we might need to consider the signal lengths. However, for the bone mill, that does not matter because we get uh, signals in only from farms that want bone mill. So we could even do away with the, with the decoder. And then here, if we have a signal, uh, cauldron gets pushed up, we unpower the redstone line, which then means torches are lit here on the side because they are currently unpowered because the redstone line is powered. And what this does is powers one or two or even more redstone lines below. And the way we do that is we want to power those redstone lines um, that we want pistons to move down. So here for the yellow line where we want output on this end, we want to move that piston down or the piston below firing. So that's why we have a torch there. And then for the green line, where we want to have the output here, that means this one should be closed off. Yeah, we have a torch there. And then this one should also be closed off and we have another torch there. We don't have a torch there, which would be corresponding to that piston pair there. And we don't have a redstone blocking that pass there. So that's uh, quite an easy way. And actually I am quite a bit enamored with uh, this setup of getting a redstone signal out because what you can also do uh, to get a redstone signal, right, is having a redstone block. There we have it. Right, but how do you move that? Because if you do that, the piston is powered because it has a power block adjacent. Uh, that really does not work. And the fact if you have a movable entity can be moved around as a piston that gives out a signal that can be uh, uh, compared or you can 
take an output like uh, for example a container you can basically get uh, a signal out you get even different signal strengths but here we uh, don't care about that uh, we basically only want to distinguish we have a signal we don't have a signal and unfortunately most containers that we can take a signal out are not movable in Minecraft Java Edition. Uh, so uh, Waterfilled Cauldron is a nice exception there. And if we would have to prolong that, uh, we could probably somewhere between two lines, we can have uh, repeaters to bring the signal strengths back up because signal strengths is not something that we are worried here. We just need a signal that's long enough uh, for these torches to light up. So signal strengths of um, one or two should be good enough. And with the setup here, where we will basically feed in the bone mill signal, um, which has a certain length, we are basically good to go. So now all that remains to be done is put this to practice and build it in the actual world. I have put two systems in place. This one here is the smaller one. And as you can see the redstone lines down there that should hook up to uh, the decoder are color coded so we know um, if we have cobble for smelting that should go out this way and cobble for storage this way. Um, I wait off with the with the hooking up of the of the system. Um, this one should not be uh, that difficult. We just have to get the signal from up there down here, but we cannot take it from the redstone lamps because uh, doing that would mean observing the lamps and that would give us two signals one when the lamp turns on one when the lamp turns off so probably we'll have observer on this uh, smooth stone block and then somehow take the signal down to where we need it and as you can see, I had to make a bit of room down there because the farm was just not built high enough. And that's basically the reasoning why most of our farms are floating in the air. And here on this side, we have a few more colors. We have the dirt. We have the normal tree, we have the uh, acacia, the mangrove, and the 2x2 two two tree farms that does not have an uh, automated system to detect when we need stuff. And up here, it also gets a bit... Uh, colorful and a bit more complicated with more lines crisscrossing over each other but now we basically have the uh, the input and the coder down here and the output lines with the water stream can go up uh, on that level However, we are not yet at the end of our problems that we need to solve with that system. And 
this might give you a hint of uh, what's coming next. But that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider leaving a like. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss the solving of the comparator mystery in probably the next one. So I'll see you then. Goodbye.